Hello, and welcome to Only Lovers Book Club, where I get together with my favorite um, author panelists, and we read a romance, and we talk about it, and we take turns. This month was the end of our second quarter for 2022. I love saying that. It makes me feel so cool. <laughs> um, and it was Andrea's pick, and since it's the month of June, we read... Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Um, the book is about two authors, right? And they kind of like, we'll get into it, but they reconnect at this author panel. And so we decided um, this time around, Drea suggested that we should kind of like dress as though we were invited to an author panel. We also had to come up with uh, the panel that you know we're we're speaking on or you know, whatever or moderating. So that's what the that's what the author. Is. So I want Drea to go first. Drea, what what's your author look and uh, what is the like this fake panel imaginary panel that you are uh, speaking or attending or moderating? I am as as evidenced by my shirt. It just says read banned books and there's like fire and a hand <laughs> holding a book in front of the flames. <laughs> Uh, speaking on a panel on kid lit book banning in public schools and libraries. So I am wearing bright red lipstick. I have the biggest hoops I own on and I've got smeared eyeliner um, and mascara and just big curly hair because obviously I've been crying, but even through my tears, I'm going to look fierce at this panel. Um, and I decided if I were going to go to a panel, I'm going to talk about my feelings because that's the thing that I am uh, most assured on. If there's, if there's one thing I know, it's, it's being sad girl. So my panel would be the bigger the hoop, the bigger the heartbreak. Um, surviving machismo um, as the one who feels most so, something like that as as like a big feelings person i um put concealer on so i wouldn't look as tired that's the first step um and i'm wearing a kind of like a, a button print button down shirt it's orange and it has like safari animals on it. i don't know this is like what is this an impala then there's tigers i don't know where this is i don't know where this is i don't know where this region is but it, i just call them you know safari animals and um wearing hoop earrings and the panel that I am uh gonna be moderating uh is let me see what did I come up with um bilingualism in publishing um <laughs> balancing multiple linguistic identities in books you know because we we have talked a little bit about you know books that are written by Latinx authors and the use of Spanish in them and that's a conversation I'm interested in having and I would I would pay the fee to go to all of our panels to be honest <laughs> <laughs> those are those are our looks and those are our panels I don't know if you're listening if you're watching Amanda let us know which one you like the most and it better be mine okay so like I said we read <laughs> seven days in June by Tia Williams hold on let me hold the cover properly uh <laughs> i'm covering the reese's book club sticker it's not even a sticker anymore you can't even peel it off if you don't like it um yeah. and uh, drea um i'm gonna go ahead and read the back of the book we'll talk a little bit about the author and then you get to tell us why you chose this book okay okay all right so uh seven days to fall in love 15 years to forget and seven days to get it all back again. Eva Mercy is a single mom and best-selling erotica writer who is feeling pressed from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive, award-winning novelist who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly at a Black literary event, sparks fly. But what no one knows is that 15 years earlier, teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy, torrid week madly in love and have been secretly writing to each other in their books ever since so adorable um over the next seven days amidst a steamy brooklyn summer eva and shane reconnect but eva's wary of the man who broke her heart before shane disappears again she needs a few questions answered 
with its keen observations of creative life in America today, as well as the joys and complications of being a mother and daughter, Seven Days in June is a hilarious, romantic, and sexy as hell story about two writers discovering their second chance at love. Oof. Okay. I read that. <clears throat> Here's a little bit about the author um, from uh, her page. I love a .net. So this is Tia Williams .net slash about. I don't know. I just love how that sounds. Uh, about Tia. According to NBC News, Tia Williams is a is a writer's writer with a fashionista twist. And she looks like a freaking supermodel. So I get that. Um, in 1997, her University of Virginia grad embarked on the University of Virginia grad embarked on a career as a magazine beauty editor. In 2004, she pioneered the beauty blog industry with her award-winning site, Shake Your Beauty, and enjoys a career as an executive copy director. In 2004, her debut novel, The Accidental Diva, hit shelf and received glowing coverage. I'm, I'm going to cut it. I'm like literally just skipping over all the titles because there's so many. <laughs> she then co-wrote Iman's makeup memoir, The Beauty of Color, and penned two young adult novels, It Chicks and Sixteen Candles. In 2016, her, her novel, The Perfect Find, won the African American Literary Award for Best Fiction. Um, oh, and it's going to be adapted into a film by Netflix. And then her latest novel, Seven Days in June, is an instant New York Times and USA Today bestseller, as well as a Reese's Book Club, Reese's Pieces, <laughs> Reese's Book Club pay for June. Uh, and a TV series adaptation is in development with Will Packer Productions. Currently working on her next two novels, Tia lives with her daughter and husband in Brooklyn. So I decided to read the one that's on her website because I was like, there's a TV show coming. Uh, well, there's a series coming. And yeah, she's, I, I didn't think this was her first book, but I had never heard of anything else. So I just want everyone to kind of know there's, if you're like impatiently waiting for the next um, books to come, there's other stuff that you can read in the meantime, if you're like me, and this is your introduction to this author and, and her books. Um, so Drea, why'd you pick this book? Is it because it was, it, the title said June and it, we were doing it in June? Be honest. Okay. No, I'll be perfectly honest. I had no idea what this book was about. And if I had known what it was about, I probably wouldn't have picked it because I normally hate second chance romance. It's really not my thing. This was truly one of those cases of like bookstagram made me do it. Like I just saw the cover on bookstagram so many times that I was like, oh, lots of people I know seem to like this. I'm going to pick it this year. Oh, well, let me pick it for June. <laughs> and then like didn't give it another thought um, until I started reading it. I had no idea it was about two authors. I had no idea it was second chance. Um, I knew nothing about this going in. Um, but honestly, I, I'm glad. I'm glad because I might not have picked it if I had known and then I would have missed out. So thank you, Bookstagram. <laughs> It is a, a bookstagram darling. Good for her. It's a good book, and um, I'm happy for her. And yeah, see, she here. also looks so cute. I just went to her website while you were talking, and she's like, I gotta find her. She's in Brooklyn. I can bump into her somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be I'll weird. I mean, uh, or you could just go to one of her book events and like approach. Where do you live in Brooklyn? Are we neighbors? <laughs> 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 all right so since you kind of like pick this up you know kind of like on when because you've seen it on instagram so much you know give me your what were your what were your impressions as you were as you were reading this did it live up to the expectations or yeah you didn't know anything about yeah, it so i, I honestly i honestly did like i really really had a lot of fun reading it i really enjoyed it i get why so many people liked it and i think it's a very accessible romance for people who aren't romance readers too um like i think it's one of those romance books that like crosses genres a little or not genres but like crosses like audiences a little bit like people who might not 
normally pick up a ton of romance might be like, oh, Reese's Book Club, let me check this out. And then they're like, oh, ho, ho. You know? it's like, it's it, it almost gives me that vibe of like, you know how everybody was reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Like, even if they weren't romance readers, it's like, I feel like it's that kind of book where like, I could see a lot of people reading it and being like, woof, guilty pleasure kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I just overall had a lot of fun reading it. I had a lot of fun um, just with the story. It's one of those stories that's like, you know, would never happen in real life. But oh my God, I would die if that was two authors I knew. I would be on all of those fan pages. I would be tracking Twitter. I'd be like following all the sightings. Like I would love that as a reader so much. Um, and so I really enjoyed the plot because of that. Because I, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I wish this was happening. Like, <laughs> Osa, if there was like a series, I, I can't think of like a series that I've been like reading for a long time. But like, if there was a series where all of a sudden I was like, this person is real, I would lose my shit. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I really, I are, really enjoyed it. <laughs> maybe if there was a real life Mariska Hargitay's character from Law and Order and that other guy, and it turns out this was real and they were like, actually Yeah, I will them. not, I, I'm not going to lie. I have read Law and Order fanfic. Um... This was before they brought Stabler back in the newest season. And now I'm like, oh, why did I ever ship them? Like, I hate him now. I don't want them together. Like, it's like ruined that fantasy for me. So I wish they had never brought him back. Hold but up. The last, when we were talking about Silver, we were talking about how he had come back and you were so happy. Oh, no, he looks very handsome and distinguished oh, now. But oh, like the whole plot line is like. Like his wife is now dead, and then now it's like, oh, Olivia's like his rebound kind of thing. And I'm like, you deserve better. It's demasiado. I yelled at you, but I was going to say, you mean like in How I Met Your Mother? I never saw um, that show. So. I did. And oh my God, if I could take. If I could take anything back, if I could, if I could turn back time and get those hours mm -hmm. of, of my life back, I absolutely would. We'll leave it at that, and then we'll keep discussing. You've got questions for us, Drea, so we'll leave it at that. But Tasha, what did you think of the book? Had you heard about it before? I had not heard of the book before. I liked the cover when I looked it up, and then I started reading it, and I read the first paragraph, and reread it because it was so funny. And I didn't expect that to be the tone of the book we were about to read because I did a quick check of the Goodreads description and it sounded a lot like a different book that we had read for book club that I just didn't like, which is the same thing. It's like second chance romance. It was so dramatic. It was just like, Wait, which one? I, what was the one? If I don't have you by Sagi Domingo. Yeah. If I can't have you. Where it was like they knew each other, they had like a one night stand in the hotel mm -hmm. situation, and then they like never got over each other. And I was like, oh no, I hate that premise. Like, ugh. like I, I liked Queen Move because it was like they knew each other as kids and like were in each other. Yeah. There's a way to do it where I'll find it entertaining, and then there's mm -hmm. a way to do it where I'm just like, this is so much. Like, no, stop ruining my life. Leave, please. But then I started reading it, and I'm like, chuck like i was laughing that first those first couple of paragraphs i definitely was laughing real hard i'm like oh my god wait ivan i'm gonna read this to you and i read him the first paragraph and he was laughing he's like what is that i'm like oh it's the next book club read so i was so pleasantly surprised by this book like having no context about what it was going to be no idea thinking that it was just going to be like a way serious take on second chance romance i was so I was, I was, I think if it had been a serious story, it's, it would have been good, but the tone that it took was so well balanced where you still had a lot of serious stuff being talked about, but in a way where it didn't drag down the pacing of the story, it didn't drag down the moment, like there were still ways for the characters to kind of bring some lightheartedness or some dark humor to what they were talking about. So even when it got heavy, I was like, just so into what was going on. I really liked the relationship between the main characters. Like you could tell there was like this sexiness just throughout every interaction. 
Um, I liked that there was, you know, some like invisible illness representation, like the fact that she is going through her medical stuff, because that's real, like women struggle with health all the time and have to keep going and pretending like they're on top and you can't show weakness. You got to keep moving in your career. Um, I liked the mother daughter relationship. I thought that was really nice. I liked that there was a good relationship between exes. Like the co-parenting in this was really good and like really well represented. And that never happens. Like you never see, it's always the ex is a piece of shit. So I really like this five stars. I finished it really fast. I returned it, I think oh. like six <laughs> days, seven days before it was due to be returned just because I was like super into yeah, it. Yeah, just, just for our listeners, in case you haven't listened to our last episode, literally Chris ended the last episode being like, oh, what are you all reading? And Tashai was like, oh, I'm like halfway through next month's book because I started, I couldn't put it down. <laughs> you, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you read it fast. I know we always roll our eyes because we always want to beat you out of it. Um, but I don't know, 2022, this is your year. This is golden. The last year was seemed to be your year as well. I don't know. <laughs> so overall, I also enjoyed, I also enjoyed the book. Um, I didn't enjoy like I would not give this five stars. And I, I think that it is a good book. Um when we talk about if I can't have you, I do think that that book was missing the like the lightness or the jokes that this one had. It was definitely like that book was like so uh, dramatic and serious. Um and it was definitely I realized that as we were kind of like talking about comparing the two second chance romances, it definitely was missing some humor to balance it out. And I do think that um, the humor in Seven Days in June really balanced out the really serious things that the characters were going through in in their youth and then carried with them into their adulthood. Um, and I was kind of talking to this to Drea earlier where I started the book, right? And in the first chapter, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is fun. I'm going to really enjoy this. And when I'm reading a book and I know that it's like really romance heavy, I want to feel like this is something that could happen to me. And it's like very thrilling and I get excited. Like I'm going to have like fantasies about this. But whenever, when they started talking about what had happened to them and then we actually see the flashbacks of like what that week, that what that week was for them, I was like, oh, okay. And then I felt like, when I described it was that my the my spirit left the bo the book body, and I was just, I was just spectating from above. I was just you know spectating. I was not having any feelings. I was just kind of like, I think there's a difference for in my level of enjoyment if I feel like I can really like involve myself in the story, whereas I'm like I'm just kind of like observing a story that's happening and it, it's engaging, but I'm like not. I don't want to be there. <laughs> I don't want to be there. <laughs> And the emotions in the in the book were so high, and that's something that I'm actually very avert. I'm just like, I don't, I don't want your drama. <laughs> I don't want your drama, and so I immediately, I'm the kind of person that if you're, you know, I I feel like you're bringing a lot of drama into my life, into a situation. I am the person who's like, like I take a step back. We can still hang, we can still be friends, but we can't be like, I can't have all of that on me, and so on. Uh, that was one of the reasons why I had to kind of like, como que me despegue del libro. I, I needed to kind of put more space between me and what was happening to the characters, which was pretty intense. Also, you know, we'll get into it, hopefully. But I, I do have some comments about how you're not the same person you are when you're 18, despite your trauma. And then my last note is that while I do respect and acknowledge that teenagers have sex lives, I repeat, I do not want to see that. <laughs> I'm not interested in, especially when they're so um, volatile and toxic. And that definitely was a lot to to read. Um, I'm glad that it wasn't more graphic than it was, but even at that level, I was like, I'm good. Mm. How long is this chapter? <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I didn't like absolutely love it because of those things. I'll take it as a, like, you definitely rated this one higher than my last Only Lovers pick, <laughs> the death book. Yeah, I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what discussion questions did you come up with us for us? This also had some questions on the back. I don't know if you guys seen that there was like some book club questions or like. Um, that like might just be the paperback. My hardcover didn't have any questions. Discussion questions. So 
it, I didn't I didn't read through them because I didn't want to, you know. Oh, well, well, I didn't have access to those questions. So mine are not like serious book. Oh, that's fine. This book was serious. <laughs> I guess my my first question, and it's just really like me being nosy and curious. It's like these characters have like a whirlwind seven day romance twice. <laughs> Um, and so I was just curious, like, if you all have ever experienced that sort of, like, intense, like, but super short-lived romance experience, because I have. It was, like, an Irish PhD student who had just finished his PhD. I met him, like, a week before he was due to fly back to Ireland to teach, like, at a college. Um Yes, we definitely talked about this because he mailed me some letters from Ireland. We like video chatted once or twice and you both were like, mm, this is not like this is a friendship, Andrea. <laughs> I don't remember. This, I mean, but... this was probably like seven years ago. Oh, my God. I'll yeah, I feel like I should, be, I should be given some grace for not remembering this. It was a very random like. I happened to be at like a live music thing and he was there with like someone I knew and we ended up like talking and just like connecting and like <laughs> and it was just one of those things where I was like I knew he was leaving but you know being like romantic Andrea I was like convinced that we could make it work like <laughs> between like Ireland and Virginia after like a few days <laughs> that was very dramatic like I don't actually I don't even remember what he looks like but in the moment I thought that like this person was very important and yeah um, I think the closest that I've gotten to, like, maybe, like, a whirlwind romance was when I I was having an affair with the DJ from um, the high school that I used to teach at at one point. I feel like that was, like, very whirlwindy. This was before before book club, Drea, so this is, like, before, mm -hmm. before we knew each other. Um, I was... Oh, my God. Yes, it was an affair. I mean, I will, I will own up to you, to my actions, because... The person I was with was, was pretty terrible. Um, but I mean, I don't think anyone deserves to be cheated on, but I was like, I wasn't in my best place. So there's a, there's really better ways to, to do these things. But yeah, I was working at a school and there, there was a guy who used to do all of the audio things or whatever. And um, we had to be in contact because we I was in the honor society and we had to do these like activities where we needed music on the background or whatever. There was like a dance. We ended up talking and you sort of have to pay him or whatever. We got to know each other pretty well. And then we just kind of hit, hit it off. We started kind of like date. It was very, it was a very short thing because then afterwards he like ghosted me. But like ghosted me in a way that like we still had to work together. He stopped talking to uh. me. Well, while we were dating, I mean, so I don't know if we, went, we went to like Ringgong and we went and we stayed over there and it was it was really nice. I had a good time. Like I think back to it now, and even though it was like it was super awkward and painful how it kind of like ended, but in the moment it was really nice because I was kind of like having this like extra, um, very extra moment of like I'm very brazenly, openly, you know, being with someone who isn't like my actual partner. <laughs> um and yeah and it was it was it was wonderful. i had a wonderful time i only have nice memories of of that that trip and it was i want to say it was like a week and a half of just kind of like intense hanging out and then afterwards he was just like i think i think what it was is he met someone else that he wanted to date and didn't know how to tell me and i was like it's okay and i have a partner already <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, it's okay. All you need to just let me know. All you need to do is let me know. And then I could manage my feelings a little bit better. But he definitely was like, except he couldn't go because he still worked at the school. <laughs> so very awkward for a while. But, you know, we got over it. I, I really think it was more about me escaping the relationship that was causing me so much pain and being and not thinking about that and being with someone who really was kind of like taking me out of that. Toxic, yes, but it is, it's in the past. It's, it's a what? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had any sort of whirlwinds because, and Christina can attest to this. I am a slow burn person. 
I will have like the undercurrent of some sort of attraction for like years. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes nothing ever happens. Usually I make out with the person at some point and then it doesn't go anywhere. I guess the most I've ever had something kind of like that was free relationship. Um, I was at a friend's housewarming party and she used to work with this guy who was like her mentor and he was like super good looking, like a very, very good looking Russian, I think, Turkish director guy. Like he worked in film, so they were working you've together. Always, you've always liked the Europeans, I see. <laughs> uh, I guess. <laughs> I have a type. <laughs> um but so and and we had like known each other at that point for like two years like i knew of this person me and my girl gang were always talking about how hot he was how hot he was how like one of us needed to like hook up with him someday and i'm just like ha ha ha, ha. <laughs> i'm like good luck you guys you're gonna do great and it was never like we never had that kind of like flirty interactions with each other because i'm like he likes white girls like i'm not gonna bother and then we go to this we go to this housewarming party i dressed up I've, i'm trying to remember what my outfit was but i was looking good like i have photography and photo and like video evidence from this night somewhere in my phone because i was looking good and i go and we're like all drinking and we're smoking and then he shows up and he and i don't think i had ever dressed up when we hung out with him before i think like i dress up for brunch there's like dress up for brunch outfit and then there's like, I'm going to dress up for this house party because she has some friends that are cute. And like, I'm going to make, make out with somebody tonight. And yeah, he just like looked at me from like across the room and was like, <laughs> like, hey. And I was like, hey. <laughs> and we were just like around each other's orbit. But then the like radius got smaller and smaller. So we like kept bumping at each other and kept bumping at each other and kept bumping at each other. And then this house party was lost. It was like two something in the morning. I'm like, I need to like get out of here. And I'm like, I've never had like a one night hookup like that before. So I'm like, I don't really know how to make this happen. And we had this other friend who kept like making conversation with him and talking about like race and politics. And I'm like, girl, you need to go. <laughs> so then at some point, um, I started saying goodbye to people and I'm like, okay, I'm hugging goodbye. I'm like, whatever, this is, it's not going to happen. Hugging, hugging, hugging. And then I go up to him and I'm like hugging him and he's like, you're leaving. And I'm like, yeah, you're coming with me. Right. And he's like, yes. Okay. And then he went, said goodbye to our friend, gave me a ride home. So I didn't even, I was going to like have to pay for a cab. I was going to have to do something. He gave me a ride home. We ended up talking outside of my apartment until like four something in the morning. Like the sun is rising. We're just like talking and it's just like vibes, 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 vibes. And then took him back home, had a nice time. And I'm like laughing because then the next morning he like went to go get water or something and definitely bumped into my roommate who knows him, knows that the entire girl gang is all always talking about who's going to be the one who gets it, who's going to be the one who gets it. And then afterwards I go to my phone and I have blocks of text <laughs> and it's all the girls who I like hang out with just being like, oh my God, oh my God, you guys left. I just, oh my God, please, please tell me, please tell me this happened. Please, this is, this is. And I'm like, yeah, he stayed over. And then all I get is a video of them popping a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and we had one more date after that and it was fine. But that's the only time that I can say that like the vibes were immaculate. Okay, please include this in great detail in your memoir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I want more of this with like photographic inserts of how you look that night, please. Is your curiosity yes, set up? Yes, it is. And I'll bring it back to the book for for this next one. Um I mean, okay, no, I'm still being no all of these questions are super nosy, but oh, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be that kind of hangout. It's but your pick. Guess, it's your pick. You have control. Yeah, it's my pick. Questions. And this one is at least related to the book. I <laughs> I guess I was just curious because we had such wildly different, we usually have wildly different answers about how we're going to approach situations like the catfishes, for example. Um, and so I guess I'm just curious, like if you would have given him another shot, you know, like if, if your ex that you had, or this person that you had this like whirlwind romance with has shown up 
15 years later and completely disrupted your life, would you have even had a conversation with them? Would you have let them in? Would you have kissed them? Like, you know, like at what level would you have shut the door or would you have just not shut the door at all? Like, I mean, are you asking like, if we were in in Eva's situation or like with the person that we just talked about? No, like if you were in the book situation or not necessarily if you were her, but like if you had someone that you had this like intense connection with in high school for these like seven days and you were like, you had never stopped thinking about them and this person showed up in your life again, like as an adult, like would you have given them a chance to explain? Would you have, you know, just shut that door? I want to say no, um, but I know that's not necessarily the truth. Like, I, I think that I had a, a big, like, a big deal relationship when I was in college that was, like, very dramatic and very intense, right? And that person, like, disappeared or, like, left my life for a long time. And then years later, in fact, did show back up with kind of, like, this, like, redemption arc of, like, uh, hey, I realized, you know, that I messed up, that it was me. And I blamed you, and I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. But what ended up happening was that I hung out with this person, we talked, I heard them out, and then I was like, okay, thanks. And then I left. <laughs> you know, I, it was, that was it. That was it for me. I didn't need to continue talking after that. And that was then. That was me, like, post, a couple of years post-college. So I was like much more open to like hearing people out. Me, Christina, now, absolutely not. Go <laughs> make your amends in another way. You know, go get your closure the way that you need to do it. We don't need to talk. We don't need to. <laughs> when, I, when I heard the premise, I was like, oh, some an ex of mine shows up after my fucking life is like 15 years I've passed by. Absolutely not. Do you know how hard I work for my peace of mind? Do you know how fucking hard I work for that? And then to have someone come and like disturb it, I I will admit that I get shook up when people reach out because it happens. I've dated a lot of people who have wronged me and then eventually come back and are like, hey, I'm sorry, fucked up. <laughs> and you know, I just it's like, good ah, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I am just um I'm very much confident in like where I am now. And I don't I'm not ashamed of who I was in the past or I'm not ashamed of the decisions that were made, but I've just moved on from them in such a way that I'm not interested in revisiting that. Um, I would hear a person out a couple of years ago. This me right now? Probably not. But yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> I always feel like I'm so harsh, like, no. Oh! But, um, but I do think that that's just kind of like the boundaries that I've built up and and why I, why I don't feel like I have that many people kind of like knocking on my door anymore because... I just don't fuck with people who do that. I think it would depend on how the person betrayed me and, like, how good-looking they are. Because um, <laughs> I'm a Libra. <laughs> obviously. Uh, Depending. It depends. Honestly, if you, like, betrayed me in a way that's, like, superficial because we were young and people make dumb decisions when they're young, I don't think I'd be against talking to someone in adulthood and like just kind of understanding what their deal is and not necessarily forgiving immediately or getting into a relationship because that's a lot but i'm okay to like tener cuentas claras with people then you have to watch out because giving someone the opportunity to to explain themselves then sometimes will lead them to think that now they are entitled to more of your time um and that's been something that has been annoying in the past of like hey cool like i gave you the space to say what you wanted to say not that you deserved it and we're good like we're okay now i don't have any like ill will towards you but i'm not actively thinking about you or seeking you out so i don't know i don't know that there is value in like giving a chance unless it really was something where there's like some huge misunderstanding and then they were like in a coma so they couldn't tell you <laughs> why there was a misunderstanding and that whole time the thing that you found in the backpack was for you not for the ex-girlfriend like I was see sure maybe let's talk everything else it's like eh, why didn't you send an email why didn't you just like send a note apologize i could have been like cool Sometimes it's not even like an apology for bad behavior. Sometimes, 
you know, I think people are like bored or or things never had like closure. And so they think, you know what I mean? Like, cause I feel like sometimes like relationships end and it's like really brutal and it's like really clear that it's over. And then other times they end for like different circumstances that I feel like, but anyway, I do think that um, for me personally, I really do think that um, the circumstances of the approach matter a lot. So like the situation in this book, like if I was on a panel where I felt inferior to everyone else and like my books did not have the literary, literary merit of anyone else's and my ex who was like a hot shot, handsome, like respected by every one person came up and sit on that panel and told everyone that he had read every single one of my books and they were the shit like okay i like that would have affected me like hormonally you know <laughs> and so i think it just depends and and sometimes like i'm a very curious person right and so like i once had an ex show up years later um just called me up kind of out of the blue and was like, hey, I was living in a different town and everything. They're like, hey, I'm going to be in your town. Um, do you want to be my plus one for my grandmother's 100th birthday party? Um, with the condition that nobody's bringing gifts, everyone has to bring a story about this person. And I was like, well, shit, I can't miss out on someone's 100th birthday party where people are coming with stories. That's like right up my alley. So I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to go to this thing. We go to the party. <laughs> they start introducing me to everyone. OK, so for clarity, this person had disappeared to <laughs> go work in Alaska, like tracking wolves or something. Um, it was like that kind of person. So starts like telling everyone at the party that I'm the fiance and that we're like doing long distance or whatever. And so I'm like shook, but also like, you know me, I'm like, what story am I living? Oh, yeah. I'm going to ride this night out. I'm like, Are what is serious? happening? And it turned out into this huge thing where obviously like, we made out and it was like a, a sort of like, why did we ever break up? Like, I still have feelings for this person. And then they did the exact same thing. They went to like tag some hogs in the middle of like Montana or something. Que se yo, disappeared from my life all over again. Um, but I mean, that party was the shit. No, those are good. And I mean, thank you. Like, obviously, if at any point you don't want to answer any of these questions, you don't have to. But I always... I love the fact that we have been friends for so long since like what 2015? Yeah, 2015. And and there's still like so many things I don't know about you guys and so I just love listening to stories, stories that come up. Well, this one is purely book related. No personal information here, but I just thought that this was a book that had so many good side characters. Um, like I was trying to think, you know, if you've watched our episodes or listened to our episodes for a while, you might know that at the end of the year, we do like those awards. And so I was trying to think like who we would put for the award for this book, because there were like multiple people that I thought were like, what do we call that character, that category? Side character. Side character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I was just curious who your favorite side character was in this book. Well, that's tough because there's really good ones. There's Audrey, the the daughter, who was just really, I just loved her. She's that so was cute. my favorite. <laughs> um, I like Cece, though. I like Cece. You know, I love a busy, mm -hmm. I love a good busybody who means well. Um, I think, the, wait, is there any other side characters that I, I'm missing? I mean, the slightly, because they go down, right? Like the one who gets the most page time is the daughter. And then you're right, it's Cece. Um, th then I would put like Belinda. Yeah, then her. Belinda. <laughs> Um, I thought everyone had a really unique kind of like, I thought that all of the characters like kind of showed the author's style while having their mm -hmm. own kind of like voice, but definitely Audrey was my favorite. Um, I, I thought the Snapchat therapy thing was so funny. <laughs> that yes. so, sounds like something Christina would do if she was like. <laughs> that was. So a, a funny. 10 year old in today's day and age. 
<laughs> We'd be doing like Snapchat horoscopes in middle school, probably. She's so precocious, but like believably, like I know there's kids like this out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I think that that was one of the things that it was kind of like a relief, which I mentioned when when she was sharing her overall impressions that it was nice to have to see, you know, not a a perfect mother daughter relationship, you know, Mm -hmm. because they they did have an argument or two, but the the fact that they did have a good relationship and that Audrey was very much child of of our times and very much, um, but very much a typical teenager who thinks that they like know everything or they like know a lot about one thing. And so they think that they know a lot about everything and didn't read like, oh, this kid doesn't read like a kid to me. This this kid absolutely, like I know this kid. (laughs) Like I work at a school and I'm like, I can point my finger and be like, that's that's that kid. She was my so favorite. I, every time, every time she had like a, a longer line of dialogue with her mom or just even her inter- interacting with like the guy, that was like so cute. They were, she was just like, they were adorable. Who is this man? Why is he in my house? Who are you? I love her realization. Like, oh my god, mom, did you have sex with him so that you? <laughs> in school did you uh, have to prostitute yourself to pay for my school mother no and then her internal monologue of like what i don't even want to be in private school how am i i can't like i can't uh speak for the oppressed if i myself am not oppressed by public school <laughs> to, to which i was like hey okay let's not public school is fine i mean not all public schools are great but then again not all private schools are you know they have like Dif- there is a different environment but I, yeah. I don't like this i don't like this narrative of like oh public schools are terrible because all schools are terrible here like all of them are bad i don't really care the only good school is abbott elementary that's it that's the only good school my next question is um sort of about the author i guess but um you mentioned chris when you were reading her bio you know that she does she does have a lot of books um that she's written um but this is so so this is own voices tia williams does have chronic very very painful migraines and chronic pain um and she's mentioned in interviews that she literally just didn't feel like brave enough to write about this until now like in her mid 40s like i don't even know how many books into her career um and that really like stayed with me. Um, and so we we talked about it a little bit when Tashai said, you know, how how important it is to have that sort of representation of like invisible illnesses and stuff. And so I know it's come up in, in previous book club meetings, but we have talked about like in romance specifically, you typically don't see that a lot. Um, and they talk about kind of the why in this book right when she's like oh my ex-husband like couldn't deal with it he said he wanted like a wife not a patient um which i think is kind of a common attitude or at least that i've seen um in books and stuff before and so i was just curious like what you thought about just like the overall disability rep in the book um and what it added for you to the romance or to the story Um, just like kind of how you felt about it in general like you know we say plenty of books but like what percentage of romance is that actually you know it's like actually a very very small (laughs) it's like how I feel sometimes when I'm like oh there's so many Latinx books to read on my TBR and then I'm like oh this is only like five percent of all books published (laughs) like in the entire country but like we're in that bubble right so I feel like sometimes it's like oh we feel like we're reading super diversely and we have all these options but like actually it's such like a small drop in the bucket yeah and you never you never i mean at least i always forget i always forget that because like i do most of my like you know i'll go to bookshop and i'll buy my books there but um if i go to barnes and noble like i'll be like mm-hmm. oh where the fuck? Like, if i go to barnes and noble looking for a book that isn't like on Reese's book club you know and yeah. is just like what but a book that we're trying to read like i won't find it like i won't find it there um, or I have to, or they don't have it at that store and I have to order it in, whatever. As far as, I thought it was very interesting, um, I guess personally, I suffer from migraines. I'm nowhere near, uh, as chronic as the main character is, but I, um, 
but it is is not at the point where I'm like I have to be medicated or whatever but I do have like stretches of really bad days and um and one of the things that I was like I really appreciated is kind of like her explaining anything can start it anything can start it anything can start my headaches it could be I watched too much TV I was on my phone too much like that's uh, that for me like is one of the things where like oh my eyes hurt and then like that pain starts to travel you know and then it becomes like a different kind of pain and then afterwards, it's really, it's like a hangover. You're just really tired. I never felt like some, I never felt like I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly what that's like. I guess until I read this book where I was like, yep, that's, mm-hmm. And it's weird because so many people get migraines and so many people suffer from it. But yet it's like, you know, you just kind of have to try to get over it and try to, you know, continue to be a productive member of society. It reminds me of like people who have, I always forget how to say it in English, but are like endometriosis. Oh, yeah. And Where it's like because, because there's like a very mild version that everybody gets, you know, like cramps and regular headaches, then people are just like unable to conceptualize that other people just get them to such high extremes where they are actually like crushing because they are like, Oh, well, I get headaches too. Like just, you know, whatever, take a Tylenol or like I get cramps too, you know, have you tried a heating pad? And I feel like those are, those are two things where it's like, because so many people experience the mild versions, they truly just are unwilling, I think, to just like imagine that what they feel is not actually what the other person is feeling. Yeah. And it's weird. It's, it's, just, it's unfortunate. I feel like it's weird to have to have to justify your pain or feel like you're trying mm-hmm. to use it as an excuse because I would much rather just like your headache's not my headache. And I'd rather just have yeah. your headache than to, to have this one. And medication doesn't always help. It sometimes makes me feel sicker. So I appreciated just seeing it and seeing mm-hmm. how, how hard it is to, to just live your life the way you want to live it because you've got this pain that is just not hard to explain, but hard to get people to understand. Tashai, did you have anything you wanted to add before I ask my last question? No, I think you guys had a super nice conversation about representation. Um, I think this book does a good job because, yeah, like you guys mentioned, I think we've only read one book that represents any sort of disability experience. And when you were talking about endometriosis and migraines, my immediate reaction is, well, of course, because it primarily affects women. Like, that's why you're not getting anything to support endometriosis care or migraine care is because it's primarily affects women. If men got migraines all the time, if men got endometriosis, if men needed to get abortions, all of it would be available at the corner store at a 24 hour bodega. You just go, you can get yourself a sandwich, get yourself all that good, good. You'd be fine. Um, but no, I think I thought it was really good to get that sort of representation. Like, um, I don't get chronic migraines, but like I get vertigo, which is like a really silly thing to feel like, um, like you have to tell people about because it's only ever been used as a comedy device in like movies and TV shows, but it's fucking terrible. Like you feel really bad. Obviously I can live my life with vertigo and it's fine. And I've had to do it and it's okay, but you just feel really shitty. And the fact that no one who I know gets it the way that I get it and it's interrupted my work, I've had to cancel plans. Like the first time I ever got it it, and it lasted a long time, I had it for like two and a half months. Like I had to go to four or five different specialists. I had to get their like physical therapy to try to deal with it. And the entire time people are just like, oh, so you're just like nauseous. I'm like, yo. Yes, but also like I can't bend over. I can't close my eyes in the shower. I can't like turn my head too fast if someone's calling me. So you know, I ha- only if it was only that you were nauseous. If it was only that, then I think that you could deal. But it's all the other things. Yeah, yeah, and so and then it's like on top of that, I do have like you know, like motion sickness that is unrelated to the vertigo so and stomach aches that like are kind of just always there so to see a character who's like flawed but is still like embraced in all her flaws and and who is realistic about the impact it has on her life at the end of the book she is very open about what she's experiencing with her co-worker with her like writing squad and it makes such a difference like 
knowing it's happened to someone else, seeing it represented makes a really big difference. So I think this this book does a good job. And I think maybe we should like keep an eye out for other kinds of diverse representation because yeah we're in our own bubble but i think it's like we're in a soft spot right like not soft spot sweet spot right now of like having more content written that resonates with us and so it's nice for us to find these books and read them because we haven't had access to them in our teens and 20s like i wasn't reading books about queer latinos when i was in teen like a teenager because they weren't around yeah hence like i like i <laughs> that's literally why i picked that ya for later in the year about like <laughs> the lesbian teens in Catholic school. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck yeah. Like, I want to read that because I didn't get to read that in the past. But, like, yeah. it is good to be mindful of all the different categories of experiences that yeah. books are hopefully being written about. Because even though we've talked about a lot of things from this book, we have yet to mention the fact that, like, she writes erotica about a vampire and a witch like 15 well 14 books worth and so i was just curious if you were to write a 14 book long erotica smut like just trashy series what what would you be writing about <laughs> i can go first if if you all need some time if you all want okay, okay. um Okay, so I have discovered in my romance journey um, with the two of you, like you are my romance journey, um, <laughs> I have discovered that I really like shifters. Like, I guess I never realized that because I was never into the whole like werewolf thing, like growing up. But now as an adult, I've realized that like werewolves aren't the only shifters that exist. And like there are infinite amount of shifting possibilities out there but that being said i feel like they always have a dick like there is a very huge lack of like female on female shifting happening um and i also feel like there's a lack of big predatory animals that aren't wolves like i want my bear shifter like girlfriend romance i want my lion shifter my tiger shifter um i don't know my like gorilla shifter girlfriend like i <laughs> i just like that would literally be like my series it would just be like super sapphic with these like strong alpha female shifters who are like super huge strong mammals and um yeah, I don't know what I would call it. I would definitely write it under a pen name. Um, but I would have so much fun with it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think the closest we've gotten, like, IRL is, like, Aurora's Angel. I think that one, like, spoiled us so hard. And yeah, then we exactly. I want an Aurora's Angel, but that is not so soft. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay, okay. I'm picking up on <laughs> Um, okay, so I have an idea. Mine is, okay, I'm going to put it out. I hope no one steal this, because if I decide to write it, I'm going to be sad if you steal it first. Um, um, so I've got a note here. I put sluts of the multiverse, right? Um, <laughs> I think a, a combined, like, a Marvel Cinematic Universe and how they do a lot of, like, alternate dimension or whatever, but it's all, like, sexy superheroes <laughs> i'm just i'm just we're spitballing here i haven't fully developed the idea but you know something something like that where it's like a team of superheroes or sexy superheroes but would then, it be written in like in like sexy graphic novel form um i would yes it would it would read like it would read like that, but I don't know if I would be able to do a graphic novel. Okay, I mean, it, would, it would read very action-y. Cool. Very action -y. And I would try to, I would try to, I would want it to be like the, the barbarian, the Ice Planet Barbarian version, like, level of, like, this, like, team of superheroes that travels, you know, and, and hooks up and then changes time and whatever. Um, On my end, feel free, any listener out there, to steal this idea and then send it, it for me. <laughs> If I can read it without having to write it, like even better. So don't steal Chris's. Feel free to steal my idea, please. 
I hadn't thought about this. Like, what would I serialize? Mm -hmm. that, that would be this, like, 28-book series. And so the only thing that I've done about as long as this book club is work in advertising. So I think maybe I'd want to, like, write some sort of, like, Mad Men-esque ad romance Mad series. Mad, that not Mad, Mad, Mad Men meets Grey's Anatomy in the marketing Speaking. Yeah, like yeah, yeah like, this one little bit like everyone's banging everyone else. It like lets you into the inner workings of like advertising in 2022, all of the trainings we have to do, and all of the like. Okay, I could see people really being together. into this HBO series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like I think that'd be something funny to write and then like maybe you write five or six of these and then it does become like an HBO series mm -hmm. a la Succession or gets bought by Shondaland like maybe <laughs> maybe I get to option my 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 series to Shondaland well that's all the questions that I have um, these are some juicy discussion questions juicy juicy discussion questions I mean the book was juicy so I felt like I got you. Know, you. Um, guys, what else? What else are you reading? So I'm I'm reading two things. I'm reading "You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty." Um, reading in quotation marks because <laughs> I am buddy reading it with Chris, and um, just a lot of a lot of circumstantial things have happened to to slow progress. Um, and so we've only read about 10 chapters, but the chapters that I've read, I have loved, and I am really looking forward to continuing it. Um, but I don't want to get like ahead. So I'm like, you know, Chris was sick and all these things. So, um, this one has been on pause, but it is a current read. Um, and then this one I'm reading on my own in the key of us. And it's for my middle grade book club. It's the book pick for June. And it's like sapphic tweens at music camp. <laughs> um, so I'm like very, but I mean, there's also like a dead mom. So I don't know how sad it'll get, but I'm very excited to read this book because I, this is the second book by this author. Um, she wrote for Black Girls Like Me, which is one of my favorite middle grades of all time. So high hopes, no pressure, but <laughs> very high expectations for this one. So yeah, these are my two reads. This is my my buddy read is the Amezi book. And then the other one is my solo book. I am reading the Bug Boys series. But, so currently I'm on Bug Boys Outside and Beyond. And it's by Laura <laughs> Um, so I don't know. I was on my phone and looking for, looking for something like, um, to, easy to read because I was sick, but I, you know, wanted to be distracted, but I couldn't read, you know, bigger, um, or, um, in depth, like dramatic books. I didn't have like the bandwidth for it. I was reading something I'd fall asleep immediately. So, um, yeah, I, I just, it was getting sick really affected and, and hurt my reading, um, my reading prowess so i just picked it up and it looks so cute i didn't realize that it was like for kids like for kid kids <laughs> um, i'm just reading it and i'm like this is so wholesome and like i'm getting like emotional because it's just so wholesome and so cute oh, that that's what happened to me remember when i read that series of like a second grader whose mom is a vet and they like rehab a skunk and I was like obsessed with this like little boy and his pet skunk. And it was, yeah, same thing. Like it's literally like a, it's written for second graders. <laughs> but I was like, ah, oh, this boy and his skunk. I'm currently reading True Biz, which is about teenagers who are in a uh, school for the deaf. It's been really interesting. I saw I've heard it's really good. I've seen that one on Bookstagram a lot too. Yeah, no, it's really good. Again, I've I I've, I've just been kind of browsing through it. I'm about only about 11% through, but I've been reading it for the last like two days, like pretty consistently. Um, and then I've got a bunch of holes. So I'm <laughs> waiting on people we need on vacation when we make it. And I saw a TikTok about my dark Vanessa and I think it's probably like a fucked up book, but so I'm like, eh. That is our discussion, our very juicy, very personal discussion 
uh, inspired by Seven Days of Doing <laughs> It. It was definitely like inspired by the book. We didn't like really dive in. I think in our overall impressions, we talked about how much we liked it. So that's basically, I mean, we like the book. And um, if you want to um, discuss it, the paperback has questions that you can do that with your friends um, in your own book club. Anyway, if you hung out, <laughs> so much for sitting through this, listening to all of our uh, tea, all of our drama. And then we'll be back next month with my pick, um, which is going to be very, um, very boozy, very romantastic, very, very historical, very sexy. Um, but until then, we'll, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. You know, this will be. Oops. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us. You can support Only Lovers Book Club by dropping some change in our tip jar and buying some books with our bookshop link. You can find us on Instagram at Only Lovers Book Club, and from there, find our individual accounts and projects. Feel free to favorite or rate us if that's an option for you, but always make sure to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss an episode.